One of the number one questions that I get asked is how do you film and edit aesthetic videos? Hello friends, it's Elle. Welcome back to my channel. So quick little introduction. I'm a Filipino American artist from California and I've been doing this whole art thing full time for the past couple of years. I have an online shop, a monthly sticker club, and I also create social media content pretty much every single day. Outside of my studio vlogs on YouTube, I mainly post a lot of aesthetic short form content over on Instagram and TikTok. I share everything from my morning routines, my desk setup, art studio tours, unboxing hauls, cute little coffee recipes, to my daily art process. As a super shy and introverted artist, I actually struggled a lot with putting myself out there in the beginning. I mean, don't get me wrong, I still do at times, but I've realized that in order to grow as a digital artist, I need to market myself in some way, and ultimately, short form content has has been one of the best ways for me to reach a wider audience and to just get my work seen. As you probably already know, constantly producing content can feel pretty overwhelming at times, especially if you're juggling other work. So it took a lot of getting used to, but over time, I actually have grown to love filming and editing. And because I do it so often, I have a few tips and tricks that have helped me grow as a creator. I know a lot of you might feel the same way that I did when when I first started out, so hopefully by sharing my entire process, this will give you some comfort and motivation to create. I'll basically run through all the equipment I use, how I film my videos, the lighting, the angles, the editing, how I plan and brainstorm my content, and all of that good stuff. So if that's something that interests you, keep on watching. So first off, let's talk about equipment. I just want to emphasize that you do not need the fanciest equipment in order to create reels and TikToks. I personally use my iPhone to film all my social media content. I currently have an iPhone 13 Pro Max, but before this, I had an iPhone 8, and honestly, that still worked pretty well. Second, having a tripod has helped me so, so much during my filming process. I use a sort of kind of jank one that I got from Amazon years and years ago. The brand is UB Size and it's a little wobbly but it does the job. Not only does it make my videos steady, it also frees up my hands so that I'm able to focus on whatever I'm doing, whether it's an unboxing or if I'm just designing something on my laptop. I am hoping that I can upgrade it to a much nicer tripod that can do better overhead shots once I save up enough money. By the way, I'll make sure to link every single single thing that I mention and use in the description below. Let's move on to filming. For reference, here's a screenshot of all the camera settings that I used to film. Basically, I always film in 4K at 30 frames per second, but I always export at 1080p, which I'll talk more about later. You can film at 60 frames per second if you want, but that's mostly ideal for like high action shots where you wanna slow down the footage, and of course, it's gonna be a bit smoother. But since I usually film super chill ASMR type shots at at home, I feel like 30 frames per second works for me. It's incredible quality and saves me a little bit more space on my phone, so it's totally up to you. There's two things that I like to keep in mind while filming, and that's angles and lighting. Like I mentioned earlier, my tripod has been a huge lifesaver when it comes to filming because I can easily adjust the height and the direction of my iPhone in between filming clips. People like to see all the details, so switching up your angles, showing a front-facing view, a side view, a close-up, an overhead view, etc. can really add more interest to your video. I also feel like the more that you watch films, the easier it will be for you to figure out whether whether or not something is or isn't a good angle. So I suggest watching a lot of movies and just studying the way that they frame their shots to make them look more cinematic. I personally am so inspired by Wes Anderson and the overall symmetry of all his shots. So I like to make sure that whenever I film, everything is super leveled. Depending on what I'm shooting, for example, if it's an unboxing, a desk setup tour, or like a recipe, I like to 
shoot at least 7 to 15 different clips every time I film. The reason being that you want to keep your viewers interested, so showing different angles and compositions really helps make your video more interesting. People tend to get bored in like 3 seconds, so it's good to switch it up with quick different shots. It's also just good to have a variety of clips to choose from while you edit, and you could also potentially use them for future clips too, which I actually do a lot. Reusing your old clips to create new content not only saves you so much time in the future, but I also feel like whatever you create shouldn't only be shown once and that's it, so repurpose your content. In terms of lighting, I personally like to use as much natural light as possible, so most of my videos are actually filmed during the day with all of my windows wide open. Obviously, there's gonna be cloudy days, or maybe you live in a place that doesn't have much sunlight, or your schedule only allows you to film at night. So for those reasons, I highly suggest getting a ring light or a softbox light so you can add a little bit of brightness whenever you need it. The two that I have are by newer and again you can easily find them on Amazon which I'll link below. Otherwise if you film in low lighting your footage is gonna be super grainy so lighting is so important if you want to have crisp videos. A tip that I have to keep things in focus whenever you're filming, especially if you're filming alone like me, is to hard press your screen wherever you want it to focus on. After a couple of seconds, a text will pop up that says AEAF lock, and that basically will maintain the same focus point no matter what, so you don't have to worry about things getting blurry once you hit record. Lastly, aside from angles and lighting, it also helps to have a nice background to work with, so I like to use my desk setup behind me as the main backdrop for most of my videos. Let's move on to one of the most important parts of this process, which is editing. To be honest, I suck at editing in app. I don't know if it's because I have stubby little fingers, but I have a hard time cutting the clips. It just takes me forever. I personally find that using a third-party app like Final Cut Pro on my laptop to be so much easier. Plus, by editing out of app, I'm able to streamline the same video across all my social media platforms without worrying about things like watermarks or a decrease in quality. Your first clip is so important and should instantly grab your viewer's attention and should also be a glimpse into what the video is actually about. For example, if you're doing something like an unboxing, you can show a pan of all the items in your first shot, or if you're making coffee, you can show the final pour. I generally trim every clip on my timeline between one to two seconds so that the video feels much more fast paced. In terms of the length of my videos, I try to keep it between 15 to 30 seconds. I feel like anything more than that is a little bit too long in my opinion, but definitely keep it under a minute. So many people have asked me what filter I use in my videos, and I don't use any filters at all. I actually color correct every video in Final Cut Pro. I think I paid around $299 for Final Cut, which is really expensive, I know, but I also edit YouTube videos, so that's what I mainly use it for. And I know that not everyone has access to this app, so I'll just talk about all the editing basics like shadows and highlights, which I feel like you can edit in most apps and also directly in your iPhone. I'm not going to share my exact color correction details because that's something that's super personal to my own style, but I will share the general way that I like to edit. So I usually like to add text in the first few seconds of my video to add some context. Coming up with some sort of hook is a great way to grab people's attention. And some of my favorite ways to do that is by writing relatable POVs. I'm gonna read a few POVs that I use in some of my past videos. POV, you wish your life were a Ghibli film. POV, you're healing your inner child. POV, you make cute stickers for a living. POV, you love aesthetic packaging. So you can 
pretty much write anything you want. Just make sure that it's something that people can relate to. In terms of fonts, I tend to use the same one in every single video for consistency. For reference, I use Arial Black because it's just super bold and clean, but there are a ton of free fonts on the internet that you can use. Just make sure that they're free for personal and commercial use. If you want to add even more context and more personality to your videos, you can always do a voiceover, which is usually best for things like day in my life. I personally don't do voiceovers too often, but when I do, I like to use this little guy and it's a blue microphone that I got from Best Buy. I got it for $90, which is kind of pricey, but it's a really good starting mic that you can easily plug into your laptop. Otherwise, your iPhone is your best friend. You can totally just record from the bottom of your iPhone and it's still gonna be super good quality. Now that your video is all edited and good to go, it's time to post it and share it with the world. Not gonna lie, this part usually takes me the longest because I am indecisive and I'm always searching for the perfect song to use. But I do generally like to use songs that are trending so that it's more likely to be seen. How you find out if a song is trending on Instagram is if it has this small arrow pointing upwards beside the song title. I like to casually stroll through my reels whenever I have time, so mostly late at night. And whenever I like a song, I just click on the title and then I save it so that I can use it in the future. Let's talk about hashtags. I like to keep my hashtags pretty minimal, straightforward, and relevant to whatever I'm posting. So for instance, I like to use hashtags like hashtag small artist or hashtag desk setup. Honestly, whatever relates to what I'm showing in the video. And I normally don't like to use any more than 10 hashtags because I tend to just be more descriptive and use keywords in my caption instead. Speaking of captions, this also takes me forever to write just because I like to keep it more personal and add a little bit more value on top of the visuals. So if the video shows me making a sticker for example, I like to talk more about the manufacturing process in my caption or if I'm sharing a recipe, I put all the ingredients in the caption so I try to be as descriptive as possible. So now that I walked you through my whole filming, editing, and posting process, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how I brainstorm ideas and plan out my content. So I have a giant list of random ideas in my notes app on my phone. When it comes to thinking of what to film, I genuinely think it's so, so important to actively consume the content on the platforms that you're posting on. But not only will you have a better idea of what's trending, but you also can do some research and see what other creators are doing. They don't necessarily have to be in your niche either. You can always apply what someone else does in your own personal way. If I could leave you with any piece of advice, it would be to try everything and see what works. My IG grew from 10k to 30k in just a couple weeks, all because of one reel that popped off. So you honestly never know what people will respond to or what will hit the algorithm. So don't put yourself in a box, be creative, and just keep creating. Because I film and edit videos so often, I have a crap ton of videos in my photo gallery. If your phone does not have a pop-up telling you that you ran out of storage and need to upgrade your iCloud, then you're not filming enough. Okay, seriously, I actually really need a better way to organize all of the videos. I do have an external hard drive though that I'll probably transfer all of my video files to whenever I don't feel lazy. So that's one suggestion that I have if you're old also dealing with the same issue. I do want to quickly touch on monetization because Instagram no longer offers the bonus reels program, at least in the US. So an alternate way that you can make money for your reels and your TikToks is through UGC, which stands for user generated content. Essentially what this means is you'd be filming and editing video content for companies to post on their social media channels. Luckily, I've had a few collaborations this past year that have helped me so much financially. So this is definitely something 
something to look into. If you're hoping to make content creation more of a career, I can probably make a whole other video about UGC alone. So if that's something that interests you, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful and were able to take away some good tips. Just a reminder to try not to be discouraged by numbers and to keep creating content that you love. With social media, it is so easy to compare yourself to other people, but that is not healthy and everyone is on a different journey. So try to focus on yourself. Trust me, every video that you create will only get better and it just takes a lot of time and practice, but eventually you will form a community of people with the same interests who support you, which is honestly the best part about content creation. If you liked this video and you want to see more content from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and comment below and let me know who your favorite creators are because I would love to discover some new channels to watch. Until then, I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone! Mm -hmm.